Hi everyone, my name is John Stan and I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. I've been practicing acupuncture for 30 years and I'm going to introduce to you our six channel needle stimulator and you, when you get the box you will have um, the main unit and an additional box which is the power supply for you to plug into the main um, household current or clinic current supply. So let's start with opening up this box and seeing what's inside and exploring some of its features. You have a manual that describes its usage. You have the main unit, which um, of course you can see is six channels. And we'll get into that in a second. You have um, six TENS pads. Each TENS pad comes on a, uh, a sheet, so the gel is uh, good for five years. Um, you have for each TENS pad a, a, a receptacle plug where you could plug in your TENS leads. So there's six of these and we have replacements of these available for when you've used them, if you're using TENS. We have our TENS leads, we have three of those. And for each lead you have two, um, two outputs and, um, and these connect into uh, the, um, the male lead uh, connects into the female receptacle and you just push it in and then now that is ready to go. We also have now um, two bags of each three uh, leads with alligator clips on the end of them and The alligator clips are medium-sized alligator clips. And uh, so you have six leads, each one a different color, so you can just so that you can differentiate each channel. And as you can see here, I've got six output channels, and I've got six leads for each one of those channels. Now, just to know that um, there's a little film cover here that you can peel off just to, to uh, you can see peeling that off so you see have a nice shiny display there and um, that should be peeled off when you're ready to use it. Now, on the back we have a, um, a battery cover with a uh, screw so you need to get a Phillips screw and I happen to have one here. Okay, so I've taken the screw out and I've opened it up and you can see that there are six slots for, for the batteries to be placed. And they are the C size batteries. So that's C size batteries. And what I found is that it's best to uh, put the, um, the batteries in and use the spring as the last battery you put in because sometimes it's hard to get them in and I find that you can compress the screen uh, the, the spring and get that in really well. And once they're all in, you replace the cover and then you screw in your uh, screw back to hold the cover in place. Now the unit also has an outlet for main power supply, your building power supply, and that is available as a separate adapter. It comes with the units but it'll be a separate box. And you'll see that um, if you just run on the batteries, the unit will just show that you're running on batteries. But if you plug in the um, plug in the power supply here, then the unit will show you that you've plugged in the power supply, and it will not show the battery. Okay, so I've set everything up here to uh, demonstrate how to work the controls of the unit. I'm running on a, a power a main power, so I'm, I've got it plugged in, and I'm going to turn the unit on. So I'm going to activate the power supply and the green light comes on but the actual unit itself is not on. So to activate the unit I have to hold this on off button in yellow here for two seconds and then the unit will come on, the screen will light up and if you don't do anything within five or ten seconds the, the screen will go to a grayish mode but it'll still be on. So it just did that. So now we have different buttons here. We have the uh, um, mute button which 
as you can tell, every time I press something here, um, it's uh, making a sound. So I'm going to mute that or unmute it. I have the waveform button and this controls the type of output that comes from each lead. And so I've now pressed it so that it's in continuous mode. I press it again, it moves into intermittent mode. And now it's into what they call dilatational or alternating slow and fast frequency. I have a channel uh, control button here, which allows me to switch between the two pairs, uh, three pairs of channels that this uh, machine outputs. So for every two pair, you can um, use one frequency. So channels one and two are controlled, are using this 10 hertz. Um, channels three and four are using the 50, uh, the 20 hertz, and channels five and six are using the, the 50 hertz. So if you look here and I'm, you see the flashing button, when it's flashing like that, you can adjust. And so it's not a flash camera, so I have to press it again. You can adjust the frequency plus or minus, and then you can press set and confirm. Set and confirm locks in that frequency. I'm going to press it now to adjust the middle two channels, channels three and four. And so you watch, I have to press once, twice, and now it's flashing. I can adjust and you see that the, the frequency is going up or down, but I'm going to lock it back at 20 and, and use the set and confirm button. So for the third one, again, same thing. I just press three times. Now it's flashing. I can adjust uh, plus or minus, and then I can set and confirm. So now I have my channel control buttons that set the frequency, and my waveform determines how that pattern of um, intensity is going to come out. And I've already discussed that. We have the, we've just showed how to use this. Uh, final two controls here on the main panel are the timer buttons. So you can adjust the time here. Just um, turn it on here. So it's at 19, I'm pressing 20. I can increase it to whatever time I want for this particular session. And I set confirm. So now I'm ready to to put an output, I'm going to change the waveform to, we'll start with continuous and we'll set that there. So now I'm going to operate um, each of these controls and how you work these uh, um, controls are you to activate the, um, this channel, you press down, change and increase the volume, the intensity, as you can see that. You see the light flash, and then you press one more time, and then it locks it at that um, output in milliamps. So you can see a digital display of how many milliamps you're giving. So this is channel one, and it's, and it's operating at 10 hertz. So let's go to channel three, which is, remember, this two pair should be operating at 20 hertz. So you press down, turn to the intensity that you want, and then you press it again to lock it into that amount. So now this, this is going at 20 hertz, this is going at 10 hertz, and you can see the difference. And then in channel five and six, you press the button, again you turn the intensity up, and then you press again to lock the uh, amount there. So now the, um, so the, the unit is running, it's uh, gonna be counting down 20 minutes, and, and you have three different frequencies operating, and this one's flashing so fast that it looks like it's, well, you actually you can see it, it's flashing much faster than the other ones. So now um, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna change the waveform to intermittent, and let's repeat the same thing and see what happens there. So I've changed to intermittent, I've pressed the confirm button, I'm now going to, um, increase the intensity here and lock it in and so you can see that it's intermittent it's like off now coming on it'll stay on for about 10 to 15 seconds and then it'll go off and then we'll repeat here and lock these channels in I press increase the intensity press again to lock it and now you can see that it's all operating on a intermittent frequency, which means that it goes on for a period and then pauses and then comes on again 
um, for uh, the same amount of time for as long as that timer is going. So now I'm going to turn the unit off again and I'm going to switch to the waveform of, of dilatational or alternating um, slow and fast. And the way this unit will do it is that it'll, the fast frequency is the top one you have here and then it'll divide this frequency by five and it will um, go to, and that'll be the slow frequency. So this should go from 10 to, to 2 and this should go from 20 to 4 and this should go from 50 to 10. So let's uh, see that happen. So I'm going to press the button. I'm going to adjust the output. So now it's lighting up the LED and I'm going to press it to lock it in here and do the same with channel 3 and 4. Lock it in, press, turn to increase intensity and you can feel a little kind of like duh, 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 every time you turn it a little bit, which is nice. So you know you're doing it increments of basically 0.5 of a milliamp. So now I've locked them all in place and you will see that they're going at a certain speed then they go a slower speed and then they speed up again to the faster speed, which is nice. So chronic pain uh, or um, for any kind of pain actually responds well to the alternating frequency because the low frequency stimulates um, certain types of endorphins for chronic pain and the higher frequency st stimulates a few other endorphins for acute pain. And so when you do this, you're stimulating uh, five different types of endorphins. And that uh, was discovered using uh, a study called Hans research and uh, you can easily look that up in um, on Google and find out about that research. But um, that's basically it. This is the unit and um, it's an exciting, simple but easy to use unit that you could use in your clinic and I hope this overview shows you that it's got a lot of different options and possibilities and not to also to mention, I almost forgot before I ended here, is that um, on the side is a is a, a little switch that uh, allows you to convert it from uh, outputting uh, on a electrostim level to a tens level, and so it it increases it to a much stronger output. But you'd only use that setting for a tens. Uh, so you'd switch these electrodes and put in the tens pads electrodes, and and then attachment to the patient. But uh, if you're doing acupuncture, you're going to get way more bang for your dollar using needles and electrostrim into the needles. All right, uh, thank you for this, and I hope that uh, this explains everything that you need to know to happily and successfully operate this unit. Thank you for watching. I wanted to just share a little bit about how this unit works and how you can operate it in the clinic. Now, weirdly enough, I want to also share with you that phenomenon of why the flickering lights didn't shine the way they actually did in real life when I recorded it on the camera, just to validate that uh, what I was looking at was that the LED lights were flickering according to the alternating uh, slow and fast as they should. Uh, yet when I took the um, video and put it into the computer, uh, a lot of the flashing did not occur. occur. That was very strange to me. I had thought that the, um, it would be cool to actually see the uh, video uh, on video, the flashing lights to show how the output is in fact working. But weirdly enough, it didn't, um, it, or it kind of did uh, sometimes and I, I Googled it and it looked like that there was some sort of screen flickering effect that occurs uh, and cameras try to blot it out to try to minimize that. So I, it was something that was done automatically and unbeknownst to me and it was quite frustrating. So anyway, thank you for your time. I hope that explains any anomaly, but I do validate that those LEDs were flashing according to the settings that I put them at. And and although on the actual video, they may look like they were at some times and then other times they weren't, they were doing it. And I'm sure you'll be happy with the machine um, if you do choose to purchase it from your distributor. Thanks again and all the best to you.